hello. <laughs> now you can maybe pass. Change, or, yeah. yeah. Um, well, uh, uh, I'm happy to introduce uh, uh, our Aga Khan uh, program fellow, Dr. Nasiba Baimatova. Uh, Nasiba is a lifelong devotee of Central Asia. And since graduating from Moscow Institute of Architecture, she has spent many years exploring and writing about architecture and art of this region, including monographs and articles. Uh, along with a diverse team of experts, she worked on restoration projects on medieval uh, monuments and took part in archaeological expeditions as well. Nesiba holds a PhD from Free University of Berlin, Department of Near East Studies, where she specialized in pre-Islamic architecture of Central Asia. So she's not an Islamicist. <laughs> uh, her book published in the series of the German Archaeological Institute uh, titled Archaeology in Iran and Turan, Volume 8, 2008, introduces more than 60 excavated building ruins covering 5,000 5, years of Central Asian history of vaulted architecture. Uh, and that is coming out in English, did you? No, it's in German. It, but it, it's not going to be translated in, into English? No. no. I, I thought we had... I don't know. All right. <laughs> Maybe I imagined. Wishful thinking. Um, Nasiba spent... Uh, and we have a copy um, of the book. Nasiba spent five years in Germany studying with uh, research groups of the Museum of Indian Art, today Museum of Asian Art, and the Museum of Islamic Art on Buddhist Manichaean monastic building ruins of Eastern Central Asia, um, namely Western China, and also on stucco ornaments and architecture of the Hulbuk Palace in Southern Tajikistan. Today she will offer her insights into the stucco ornaments and inscriptions from four uh, buildings in Northern Hurasan, uh, that is from the modern uh, Tajikistan and Turkmenistan uh, region. Uh, I'm sure she will explain these, but these four buildings that are explored will be in Sayat, Hulbuk, Dandanakan, and uh, Musriyan. Um, and uh, basically, she will deal mostly with the uh, stucco and calligraphic uh, ornaments. Let me pass this on. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much for introduction, for uh, warm words in my address. Uh, dear teachers and students, I will read what I re <laughs> wrote. Uh, heartfelt thanks for encouragement during my research at Harvard University. I'm very grateful to scientific body of the Aga Khan program for financial assistance of my research. Also, many thanks to all friends from the Fine Arts and Widener Libraries and the Arthur Sackler Museum for assistance and providing access to data. Today, I'll present a beautiful topic on ornaments and inscriptions in Stako implemented in four buildings of North Khurasan. It's still under investigation uh, as inscriptions have not been read but I will appreciate an opportunity to discuss it with you. First part uh, introduces uh, into the area of research. The second provides studies. First part introduces into the area of research. The second provides studied and supportive mat materials and a brief summary. And third part summarizes key points I want to uh, my audience to remember. The introduction. Legendary Khurasan is situated on border between the Central and Southern Asia, along a wide belt of copper duck 
and Hindu Kush mountains. Geographically and historically, Khorasan is an area of interchange of various artistic uh, cultures of the Asian continent. It played and plays a significant role in inter interrelation of the east and west, the south and north. Regarding the first millennium of BC, I take the name Khorasan in quotation marks, as its earliest use has been attested for third century AD. Names of uh, four major uh, areas of legendary Khorasan are preserved in Bisutun and Persepolis inscriptions. The land in upper reaches of Amudarya was known as Bactria Margiana, and the plain in lower reaches Harazmia. Haraiva was occupied, uh, has occupied the Harirut Tajan Valley, and Partava stretched along Kopedak to the west. Like stages, uh, like stage of a Greek sage appears the core valley of legendary Khorasan half surrounded with mountains from the south, the seat of uh, Margiana Bactria kings. Each area, each area was governed from administrative centers, Balkh, Herat, Abar Shahr Nishapur, and Tuprakala. Spoken were non-Indo-European languages of the Oxus civilization and the languages of the indo European family, that is Parthian, Khorasmian, Hari, and Bactrian. Oh no, sorry. Alexander the Great took away the cool land from the local rulers in 4th century BC, where his followers founded a new state, the Greek Bactria. Under Greeks, the land became strong ties with cultures of the South and West Asian lands, uh, Indian and Mediterranean, the written or administrative script of Khorasan was Greek. Four nomadic peoples who came from the country north of Sirdarya conquered and divided the Greek Bactria at end of 2nd century A BC. They uh, were the Pasianoi and Asioi, Sakaraloi and Tohario. Pasianoi and Asioi settled in the west region, and Sakaraoloi and Toharoi in the eastern land of Khorasan. Descendant of uh, Pasianoi and Asianoi are the founder of Parthian and Sasanian kingdoms. Under their rules grew up the influence of Zoroastrism and Medo Iranian culture upon the western Khorasan. Within Kushan Empire, Saka Tuharian tribes. Um, governed the Eastern Khorasan. The population accepted the Hinayana Buddhist doctrine, and local culture was involved into the Northwest Indian tradition. Spoken were previous non-Indo-European uh, languages and Indo-European languages, Asiatic Argo and Altaic Saka. Generally, this time, the division of Khorasan into the Eastern and the Western domains occurred. Khorasani priests knew the valley of Haraiva and plains of Margiana Bactria to both sides of Amudarya as Bukharstan, an assembly of signs, or place where all science, uh, sciences gather. The first word, Bukhar, is affiliated with the Sanskrit Vihara, a place of enlightenment, and the second indicates the land or country. The foothill zone of Khorasan, adjacent to Hisar Alai, Badakhshan, and northern Paropa Misus, has been called Toharistan, the land settled by Toharians, um, composed of two words, Tur and Huo, uh, probably designation of two populations in the east of Khorasan. An influx of Sasanians from the west and Heftalids from the east into the land by the 4th, 5th century facilitated the spread of first Pahlavik and Middle Persian on one side and Indo-Saka Tibetan languages on the other side. The scripts of local Zoroastrians, Sabians, Manichaeans and Nestorians were variants of Aramaic Syriac and Estrangelo. The interpreters and followers of Buddhist Hindu re religions, however, spoke non-Indo-Iranian and Indo-Iranian languages and developed the Northwest Indian scripts Karoshti and Brahmi. Um, the Khurasan under Turan, Turks, and Arabs. New names of old Khurasani eras reflect 
influx of foreigners and movement of locals in the region. From administrative point of view, according to Atabari and Al-Bazuri, on the change of 7th, 9th centuries, Khorasan was divided into four quarters. The central quarter they named Bukharo, um, west quarter Iran Shahr, the east quarter Kushan Shahr, and the lands northwards from Amudarya Movaron Nahr. This period, Turkic tribes subdued the population of the northeast areas, and Arabs conquered the inhabitants of core areas. The First Nation used to speak languages of Altaic Turkic family and wrote runic, and second one, uh, Semitic Arabic languages and wrote in Syriac Aramaic scripts. During the 9th, 11th centuries, Khurasan was submitted to caliphs only nominally. The land belongs to Tahirids, Samanids, Banijurids, and Mamunids. From 1040 till 1220, Khurasan was filled of dominance of uh, Turkic dynasties, Karahanids, Seljuks, and Khurasan Shahs. To period, characteristic is the formation of new Persian and Indo-Turkic literature languages, and for writing of their sounds, the adoption of Aramaic Arabic script. There are strong connections between these historical events, overpopulation of settlements, and the rise of towns in the foothill zones of Kopedak up to southeast shores of uh, Caspian Sea, and in intermountain valleys northwards from Amudarya, Kashgdarya, Zeravshan, and Upper Serdarya. Despite frequent changes of um, dynasties, the ancient cities Marv, Balkh, Herat, and Nishapur up to begin of 13th century continued to act as a cradle of arts and artistic ideas of Khurasan. Testified is this by a number of uh, architectural monuments of early Islamic periods. Generally, this time, the division of Khurasan into the northern and southern domains occurred. Today, the northern part of Khurasan includes territories of Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, and Tajikistan, and the southern part, northernmost provinces of modern Iran and Afghanistan. Due to investigations of Soviet period, the buildings in northern Khurasan have been incomparably better explored than those located to the south. Khutal, the house of a uh, wealthy in Sayyad. Khutal's geographical borders range over a wide area, with its core lying far into eastern marshes of Khurasan, at feet of Badakhshan Mountains. Most fertile area, area of Khutal's lies in northern, uh, on northern bench of uh, Panj River. Remains of an ancient town overbuilt by houses from a modern settlement, Sayyad, stretch along a, an irrigation canal. The researchers of the Institute of History, Ethnography, and Archaeology of Tajik Academy of Sciences, Erkinoy Gulamova and Vladimir Bajutin, explored the site in 1970-76. Sergei Khmenitsky described Sayyad buildings and published Bajutin graphical materials in 2006. Early investigators defined the, outline, defined the outline and urban structure of settlement. According to their data, local houses were built uh, after a Greek-Roman model of a peristyle house. I'll consider here a small house with an inner courtyard and pool, surrounded by rooms and entered from the north. Four round towers characteristic to Margiana Bakhtia architecture have emphasized the corners. Large halls built in southern sections were flanked with two shrines and chahartaks at their entrance. The stucco decoration of house was two times renewed. <coughs> Ornaments of early period have no, in no inscriptions. They belong to 5th, 6th centuries. A row of uh, circa 80 centimeter higher pilasters with bushy capitals adorned walls of courtyard and shrines. Dense arrangement of pilasters produced an effect of a three-lobed arcade. The lack of information what dates the house owner worshipped. Judging by a form of arched openings and amount of shrines, they respected an image and sculpture of the Buddha. 
The patterns were geometrically constructed on the base of a square and octagon. Traces of gold and red paint. Paints are identified on all stack of fragments. Following the renovation in 7th, 8th centuries, new rooms at northern wall of courtyard appeared. Two doors leading into shrines were built up and new lateral doorways opened. Also, the threshold of southern shrine preserved its significance. An open work panel protected space under the Chahortov from outside and half columns strengthened its corners. Panels and borders depicted Indian lotuses, plating and vine leaves. An image of a new arcade was covered on walls of house 17 and 18. Arcade uprights terminated in two tiered multi lobed ribbons. Identical patterns in upper cells represented an Indian lotus flanked with half leaves and water creatures. The lower cells depicted water plants and flowers, fish, and serpent like stems depicting aqua shoots of life. I name it. Giving birth to living beings, the interwoven or straight trunk ends in, fish, in fishes facing the sky. Two serpents on other field represents coiling water beasts, probably in association with the animal style of Central Asia. A pair of serpents flanked an oval with a cross, symbols of water and sun. Other field shows two water plants moving out of a vase. An image of two tiered lotuses represent a birth of earthly life. The southern shrine of building was added with ornaments of celestial content. Through six pointed star plating, visible were uh, vegetable zoomorphic patterns. In the middle of west wall, a niche crowned with a lotus stems and half leaves stood. It opened a view onto a pool inhabited with Indian lotuses. The frame depicted moving waters of the universe ending in a frieze with the crosses, probably remains of an early decorative sham. An inscribed band bordered with heart-shaped half leaves adding the wall. Kufic inscriptions re represented the 41st surah from the Quran, the story on world creation. Essential in the script are elegant stems ending in half lotuses and tendrils terminating in half leaves. The corp represents the principal motive of the prayer niche. Some interwoven letters remind Buddhist signs of happiness. Researchers date the script by the second half of 11th century, which contradict by the content of the core and carving, te and carving techniques. Section results. The early decor of Sayat House depicted slightly protruding from the background pilasters uh, with capitals and sketchy trees of life in between. Pilasters were added with regular patterns drafted de definitely with help of a ruler and pair of compasses. Round and incised indentations served as landmarks of conceptual design. Later images are painted in bright blue. Ornaments depict the evergreen algae, uh, is it right? I don't know, algae, algae, lotus and first living beings. Constructing, uh, contrasting to large scale geometric pattern on upper layer was fine decor underneath. The early and late motifs coexisted and found implications in stacos of later buildings. As you see in Nogumbad, Yarte Gumbad, Afrasia Palace, and Northern Mausoleum in Uzgand. Hotel. The square building in Holbuk Palace. The ruins of Hotel Capital Hulbuk are located on the right bank of uh, Surhab. 
In eastern part of city, there is a high mount Hishtepe, on top of which remains of a palace are identified. In 1952-53, Elena Davidovich surveyed the site, and from 1957 till 86, Erkinoy Gulamova completely unearthed the building, about 30 years long. In 1977-98, Vladimir Bajutin studied and graphically reconstructed Stako Deco from building. And finally, in 2003-2006, um, Yusuf Yakubov and a team of uh, Institute of Tajik Academy of Sciences renewed and continued excavations. Combined with the Chancellor, the palace was probably a half dead initiations. Uh, their uh, uh, imperia, first, first early, um, early heftalites are dated uh, by the 457, uh, 500, uh, 560, yeah. And up to 10th century, this building served as ancestral seat of Hotel Margraves. It was built atop of hill, strengthened on sides by brick walls. A chahortak marked the single ramp leading inside. Huge courtyard took the middle and residential structures with reservoir the northern section. The palace's southern section saw two renovations. During early period it was built up by a square building, accessible through a ramp with chahortaks at ends. The western extension grew over the southern side during the fifth century. After destruction of stack of building, uh, square building, I'm sorry. Uh, at the end of 10th century, the hill's external walls was improved by adding a new walls with buttresses. Upper wall parts from the square building were torn down and the inner cavities filled in with rubble and turned into a stamped platform. A large rectangular building was constructed in its middle during the late period, that is early 11th century. All stacos early investigators reconstructed are related to a late uh, courtyard built at rectangular building. Assembling stacos, Bajutin graphically decorated the northern and western halls of the courtyard. To verify the ornaments, I have compared his data with Gulamov's reports and archive materials and found contradictions. To assure observations, uh, I've studied and invented about 5,000 stacco fragments in two museums of Tajikistan, drew and traced uh, patterns from their scaled photographs, and proposed initial reconstructions of new panels. The study of obtained data with early and recent excavation data evinced in favor of the origin of a prevailing number of stacos from northern half of the square building. An inner courtyard surrounded by more than 20 rooms dominated the square building. West and east towers flanked the single entrance on the axis. During an early period, the courtyard's walls were covered with paintings, replaced later by covered plaster testified by dark blue, yellow, and pink paints on reverse side. Fragments were extracted from one meter thick layers of debris. Primarily, a domestic altar depicted palm trees and lions stood in the west tower. By the 6th, 7th century, the doorway to it was built up, and within the east tower and adjacent room 10, a Manichaean temple arranged. Uh, during later phase, doorways of rooms were embellished with short Kufic inscriptions, slightly rounded letters spelled out favorite fish, wishes, happiness and blessing. The East Tower was embellished with one and a half, uh, one and a half, one seven meter higher panels, surrounded with an inscribed tape on sides. Location of first five verses is identified at middle west panel of hall 17 and the closing verses appear in room 171 northwest corner 
circular arrangement uh, uh, of inscriptions repre uh, represented three stories. Um, circular arranged inscriptions represented three stories. I'm sorry. First, na the first one narrated verses from seven sleepers, persecuted fleeing young men who took refuge in a cave. The second described Kalim Allah, the prophet Mos Moses, and the third one spelled out from right house ruler Zulkarnain, two-horned one, that is Alexander the Great. Whole book in inscriptions were devoted to pre-Islamic events and heroes. They constituted an, an oldest part of 18th surah known as Al-Kaf, the cave by lengths 100, 10, 111 ayahs, included into the Quran in 615, 620. The newer part on propagation of Prophet Muhammad in Mecca evidently was inserted into Surah in early Islamic period. Linguists identified three to four writing principles, 26 lexical units, and the ratio of letters hates to white equal to one Zero 07. Low letters are enlarged and higher stems be parted. The core consisted of pearls, drop, and ribbon like figures. Dating of inscriptions by 10th, first half of 11th century, is based on Gulamova's dating of coin funds. Direct connection of inscriptions to ornament allows us, however, to propose 6th, 7th centuries. Three panels depicted and depicting a large drop-like figures, cypresses and three-lobed lotuses, rings with five-petal lotus, added uh, the west wall of Hal 17. Three other panels depicted tree of life and bush sprouting from a vase, constituted decoration on the east wall. A northern frame was embellished with waves and, and a pair of heavenly bodies. Its vault was decorated with a rarchy vault depicting an elegant scarab. Covered decor and tympanum consisted of two plated roundels, probably symbols of sun and moon. On the rear wall of room 171 were arranged three panels, and on lateral walls, pair of panels depicting a three-lobed arc, tree of life, and three rising from a, ba from a vase. The central panel represented a Kufic inscription arranged in two lines. It's concluded with the word Allah covered ver vertical across the panel. The inscription in lower half of panel was written in large italic, while in central and upper partition forms rectilineal symmetric weaving. Two identical uh, fields depicting endless knots flanked the middle panel. They showed a plating with two celestial water waves embellished with thin stems and medallions. Section results. The thickness of the the thickness of square buildings modeled relief varied from two to twelve centimeter. A basic component in all motifs was a curved line depicting spirals, S-shaped curls, and platings. Waves from water of the universe, um, united celestial bodies, stars, plants, animated leaves, and worlds into an integral system. A pair of wavy ribbons was a pictorial representation of two separated celestial male and underground female water streams symbolizing the source of life. Central to these side streams was a standing figure in the Nimbus of Glory. The significance of his message was conveyed by elegant style of Kufic letters. The principal word Allah was written horizontally and secondary words set in an upright position underneath. In style of inscription around stucco panels prevailed linearity. In some cases, uh, letters were covered in a diagonal arrangement. Their height varied from 7.4 to 8.2 cm. Now, famous Dandan Khan. <laughs> Marve Shahijan, 
than the Nakan. Remains of many settlements, wells and ice houses and isolated structures dot an ancient road stretching between Marvi Shahijan and town Serahs. Marked on, on map are four major caravan stations from north to south Gyoktepe, Dandankan, Chilsitan and Ushturmahak. Ruins of Dandankan are identified at modern settlement Dashrabad by early travelers to the site most important of who were Lesar, 1880, and Zhukovsky, 1890. A team of researchers from Turkmen filial of the Soviet Academy of Sciences um, uh, explored the site partially and revealed some structures in 1942-1943. Um, these were Zahode, Yershov, Fyodorov, and Kalashnikov. The area was mapped and surveyed by Dikov and Marushinka during the Utah K surveys of 1953-1956. Utah K means uh, from Russian uh, South uh, Turkmen Archaeological Complex ex 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 Expedition. Adikov's map localized an earliest stronghold probably built by Sasanians in 5th century. After its destruction by Arabs in 651, inhabitants moved one kilometer to the east and founded a new settlement. The settlement's core structure of fired bricks was enclosed into higher ramparts with buttresses. Two streets traversed the structure. At intersections there was a building with columns. A large house stood in southern quarter and lots of money changers occupied the eastern one. According to al Mardisi, a beautiful cathedral mosque and another one, non-cathedral mosque, stood in the town. At one of them in the early seven, uh, 13th century, Yakut saw a minaret. Yershov's drawings are combined and incomplete. A sketchy plan of main building shows a courtyard aligned on three sides with galleries and columns, two rows deep on the west. A photograph by him shows broken brick arches lying on courtyard's floor. On the west side, there, there must have been a hall, wide, circa 10 and 6 meters. Um, there are discrepancies in location of Dandankan's mosques in scientific literature. Uh, they led to erroneous interpretation. Examples are plans of Khmelnytsky. He considered the building with columns as a cathedral mosque erected according to an Arab mosque model. But the location of building at the intersection, similar to Charsu, and its um, similarity with the early Khorasani columned buildings allows us to suppose a, represent, a representative and religious function during the early period. <coughs> Two eight-sided columns marked the main entrance leading to the West Hall, probably Honaka. Judging by diameter of other uh, columns, 1992 and paired spans in between, the siding of galleries consisted of wooden beams. Recorded are three phases of decor renovation. Figurative placus embellished upper sections of walls during the first phase. They depicted stacks with five lobed leaves, rhombuses at top, a, new of half uh, a net of half leaves, added columns, and a wave with celestial borders and boots emphasized the intradoors of arches. During dominance of the Seljuks, building was restored and served as a new cathedral mosque. Following Yershov's interpretation, a minbar from the earlier mosque um, ten of, uh, built in 10th century was moved in and seen decorative columns added corner piers of the gallery. After the second phase of repair, a mihrab appears set between axial columns of the courtyard. Density of patterns emphasized an architectural concept underlying the structure. Three-quarter stucco columns supported an architrave and half dome. 
The outline of hood was geometrically constructed from two points, a feature characteristic to Samanid's domes and vaults of Central Asia. Various motifs embellished vertical fields, niches, concave parts. Inscription of two scales visually increased its depth. A line of 10 uh, centimeter higher letters encases the inner line, composed of five higher characters. A large-scale animated plant motif governed the middle field, retaining features of a vase with a growing out lotus tree. A lot of scholarship has been done on, inscri on, on inscriptions. Published is only the reading of script from Mihrab's Half Dome. It indicates, uh, it indicates, while not complete, the date of stucco carving and name of an artist. I cite 490, part of the work of Abu Bakr ibn, December 10, 1096, September 1, uh, 1st, 11, 6. Based on this reading, the Stakur Mihrab and uh, the second phase of building renovation are dated to this time. I restored the hood inscription from different sources and very hope that Professor Roxburg will succeed to decipher it. <laughs> Lateral walls of the niche depicted uh, six-pointed patterns with virals and symmetrical half-leaves. A row of cypresses with stacks and curving half-leaves embellished the lintel. Very elegant stucco columns were entirely covered with swastikas and tiny interwoven ribbons. Stocky bases uh, on round feet remind a vase for water, locally kozagi, a vessel. They are embellished with nearly triangle leaves in open work, imitating real plants overlaid or suspending from the vase this rim. During the third uh, phase, new stucco frame surrounded the mihrab. Curving uh, large letters of Nashi protruded from the fine uh, vegetative uh, background. Explorers date the, inscriptions, the inscription to 11th, uh, 12th century, terminating in second half of 12th century. A photograph I'm showing was retained in archive of the Sipkin. He took it from a stucco panel unearthed in ruins of Dandanakan. Panel depicted uh, a dado with an, arc, uh, with an arch and inscription band running around the top and sides, and also around column shaft. Kufic letters are of great linearity. Three petite petals and leaves at end of stems took an intermediate position between the letters. Light stacks spiral to both sides from axial flowers covered in exceedingly flowery style. A whirl of petals crowned upper boots. Form of panels leaves finds no analogy in stucco decoration of the building with column. Section results. Covered freely by hand ornaments required perfect skills and virtuosity in performance. Through three phases of existence, building with column retained various types of decoration. Realistic images of early vine leaves and stalks first and second row on the screen, co coexisted with the late geometric, geometric veg vegetative motifs, star platings and figurative half leaves, tree of life and animated wheels, fourth, fifth row. Quranic inscriptions circle the medallion on the hood, are set into rectilineal lines, back wall or frame, the niche with the mihrab. Then the can uh, Dandan Khan's late decorative motifs were eliminated. Recorded are blue and red paints. The stucco decor was implemented in one or two layers of plaster. Motifs tentati tentatively ascribed to 10th century uh, mosque differ in style. Mashadi Misrian Sherkabir Sufi Hostel. Sherkabir Hostel is situated on Dihistan Plateau, 5-6 km northward from ruins of medieval Misrian. 
The town took place on a military garrison founded by early Arabs and named Al Rabat or Rabadistan. In late 13th century, walls of fire bricks with round buttresses surrounded it. A main building of Sherkabir Hostel, thanks to Pekula Pe Stako Mihrab, is a widely known architectural monument. The building with surrounding ruins was subject of Sarah's survey and excavation in 2009-10. Fieldworks uh, show uh, general site stratification consisting of three to four building periods with several phases of repair. Revealed are remains of three and a half meter higher brick platform, a rectangle courtyard, and a minaret. The latter testifies Magdisi's records uh, from early 10th century on Misriyan. He associated a higher mosque with minaret with interpreters of Hadith and other mosques within the town with followers of Abu Hanifa doctrine. The main building was erected evidently in early 7th, 8th centuries. Initially, it was completely open to four sides by one and eight meter higher arches. A dome based on an octagonal drum covered the single hall. Building's forms are characteristic to central domed halls of pre-Islamic kirks and houses and to dome mosques attributed to 9-10 10 centuries of Central Asia. Explorers interpret building as mosque mausoleum and proceed from simulta simultaneity of its construction and design and design of mihrab. There is, however, doubt on contrast on on uh, doubt on contrast of unpretentious, un unpretentious quartered walls and professionally covered decoration. The core of walls consists of mud bricks but the back wall of mihrab is of fired bricks. Back wall bricks are identifi uh, identified with the bricks of Samanid's buildings. <coughs> Accordingly, its stucco decor must have been appeared in 10th century. Assumption is supported by brick sizes and quality employed in a adjacent domed hull. Scholarship paid particular attention to composition of stucco ornaments and analogies. Uh, these are Kotov and Pugachenko, pictorial images of the mihrab, and to origin of some motifs. Um, Kotov, Pribytkova, Pop, Fluri, Pugachenko. Comprehen uh, comprehensive description of mihrab belongs to Kotov and Pugachenko. Data to side panels are published by Pribytkova. Khmelnytsky defines general proportions, and Bernard is the author of most uh, recent drawing on mihrab motifs. Stucco ornaments face the southern niche up to octagon base. The photographs taken in 2009-10 show three, five, seven lobed scallops modeled on back wall of side doorways, surely appeared after bricklaying of arches. The stepped uh, back wall is deepened into the door opening, uh, uh, into the door opening. The upper and middle pointed arches of mihrab visually supported by three quarter columns. Decoration of the uh, columns is in a de de deteriorated state. Traces of de decorative swastikas are visible on the western column. Embellished with half round scallops, the upper arc supported uh, a frieze with partly lost uh, ornaments. In spandrels, there were two roundels densely encircled with kufi ledges. Today preserves only one, a tree of life with large coiling roots govern the tympanum. Standing figures of a human being or tree of life mark a concave frieze below. An Illuminated Kufi inscription underlines the whole composition. Restored from old and new photographs, partly preserved Kufi inscription outlines the middle arc. Wide bands encircled two identical medallions with tree of life. S-shaped waving stalks terminate in wheels and rounded leaves. 
The principal inscription of Mihrab, a prayer, is covered in pointed space of tympanum. At present, it is lost. Lines you see on the screen are brought uh, uh, into a single scale and outlined from various photographs and drawings. A tall tree of life is a main image of worship surrounded by a three-lobed, one and a half meter higher arch. Um, a Kufi inscription hi highlights the image, opposing half leaves placed into fields of two wavy stacks flank the stem of tree. Leaves are characteristic of plain surface notched with tiny indentations. Ornaments from Western, uh, uh, at all Western pier are not easy to restore. None of existing drawings show their outline. Generally, they were covered into a niche arc and freeze the bow. The, arc and, uh, the arch and frame of niche were inscribed, some later still recognizable. Stacco motifs on Eastern Pier are better recorded. Identified is an arcad with two tier Kufi inscriptions. Pointed arches uh, rested upon three quarter columns. Um, the decorative shem of Sherkabir Mihrab was employed on a later wall of fired bricks covered in four centimeter thick layer of alabaster. Relief is painted in blue and round indentations dotted in red. The conceptual design of Mihrab depicts waters and uh, first living beings. Human faces were set on placus between half round scallops and standing human beings marked the free, the frieze in highest arc. Rooted deep in seeds of the earth stands the tree of life. A cone pin replaces its foliage. Waters in the uh, root zone are represented in large coiling, almost animated wells. A very conclusion. Khrasani's Tako Mihrabs a pictorial representation of a temple attested by arrangement of rooms subject to decorated and to decoration changes in Sayat House, Squire Building of Old Book Palace, Dandan Khan, and Sherkabir buildings. Local mihrabs reproduce components of a temple consisting of a wide courtyard, porch with a columned hall, and a sanctuary. The Zoroastrian and Indo-Buddhist art preceded the spread of Manichaean art in Khorasan. Stucco decoration of Sayyad House is a good example for this norm. Two shrines with Chahartak's paraphrase, paraphrase dualistic concept of Zoroastrian altars for worship of fire and water in the Oxus temple, Tahtisangin, 5th century BC. The early stucco decor represents a forest due to close distance of trunks or pilasters, the openings in between, remind three lobed arches. Circular depicted forest repeated arrangement of sculptures around the courtyard of a Buddhist temple, ordered by ritual production apata. The late stucco decor, judging from arrangement of lateral doorways and halls for gathering, uh, was um, made by Manichaeans and intended for dedicated people. The artist shows an ancient legend on world creation in comprehensible and related stucco images, evergreen algae and plants, lotuses and fish-like creatures. The Mekan 41st Sura on creation of world covered in amazing Kufi, le Kufi letters was supposed to highlight the content of this pictorial message. Two-parted structure of North Tower in Hulbuk building I ideally suited the decorative concept of a Manichaean temple. Richly added sanctuary and prayer hall opened into modestly decorated courtyard. Basic decor in the hall was focused inside vertical frame. 
as talk of forerana of early Islamic portals. The sun and moon perceived by Manichaeans as vehicles or ships were supposed to transport the soil of lights of light into a new paradise. On natural walls, they were surrounded by short inscriptions, um, the world belongs to the God, al mulk and the exclamation, ex exclamation of God. The central field on the triptych uh, visible through the frame um, depicted a message conceived as a standing figure in the nimbus. Ligands on seven sleepers, Prophet Moses and Zulkarnai surrounded the believers. They symbolized the revival of belief in God through awaking from a dream. Um, sleep and invited uh, to unite the East and West. Um, if we interpret two horns of Zulkarnai as the East and the West. The basic shame, courtyard prayer hall sanctuary aligned along the axis underlines most ancient temples of the world. Well known example, old Egyptian temple. The, do the doorways of which are gates leading to God in paradise. Early Islamic arched, arched portals of Central Asia represent the same idea. A stucco mihrab depicting the gate of a domed shrine was erected in period can, uh, confirm 11th century on western side of Kotiat in Dandan Khan. Emphasizing lo <coughs> the longitudinal axis of an enclosed area, it was flanked with two posts. A heavenly body set into a half dome points to an existence of a star filled sky. The distant world through the light on near one. The stucco decor of Sherkabir, sorry, building represents an idea of oyster shell in which uh, Mihrab is a focal point. The vertical arrangement of multi lobed arches develop, at least visually, a three-dimensional depth in lateral niches. The molded decor must have been applied after the mihrab occurrence. Image of a symbolical deity, tree of life or ankesta pea, is surrounded with a nimbus of inscriptions and a prayer in six lines asked for evergreen Life. Kufi script. Ornamental geometric stucco decor of all four buildings uh, were mostly accompanied with Kufic inscriptions. Kufi is an angular and rectilinear script, the name of which implies the script related to a military garrison, Al Kufa. Our research suggests, however, that Kufi originate originates from the East Khurasan and Al Kufa is a place of its, of its adoption. According to uh, a place name on Euphrates River tributary, Hindia, where Al Kufa stood, and a name of a monastery, Dair Hind, recorded in its outskirts for period 643-750, the script was brought in by Buddhist monks, probably captives of early Arabs, who have distracted the main religious and educational centers in <coughs> East Khurasan, that is Ghayur Kala, Naubahar, Fayas Tepe, and Qara Tepe. Um, the Eastern Kufi implemented in Sayyad, Hulbuk, and Dandan Khan was covered in one or two layers of alabaster. Um, the slightly, uh, this principle uh, called locally Tabakha Pardos. The slightly square and well-proportioned characters are set within borders. The but in some cases, letters are covered in a diagonal arrangement in two tiers. Decor is simple. Split ends of letters depict a half lotus clearly showing northwest Indian origin of the script. Inscriptions of Sherkabir belong to a group of Western Kufi. Letters are outlined by narrow grooves 
covered into four five centimeters thick layers. I show you uh, another slide uh, showing the reliefs in section. And this um, principle was known as a, is known as a zanjir, zanjirapardos. They are fine and extremely intricate, wavy and interlaced, sometimes set in an upright position, densely covered. The stems suspend from line above, or letters are connected by subtle ribbons. Probably the word kufi is akin to kufian, variants kuftan, guftan, a plural name designating natives of Sharabat and Termes area. Geographically, Kufian were the first who knows what from Amudarya accepted the Indo-Buddhist culture in the second and first century BC. This is evidently evinced by the rectilinear form of early Kufi letters from Sayat and Hulbuk resembling the Karoshti and Brahmi letterings. F uh, followers of the Ashoka style of writing. We would associate Kofi with an ancient name of Paropamis Khurasan mountains, Kof, in Arabicized form, Kof. Um, in Tajik, there is a, a, a proverb, Pushti Kohev Kof, beyond the Mount Kof. It is testified in modern Turkmen language by Kopet Dak, first part of which akin to Kof. The first who referred to Kufi at end of the 10th century in comparison to Al-Hiri script was Ibn Nadim. Uh, the word Hiri designates natives of district Haraiva or Harirut Tajan Veli. Ancient Greeks knew the era of Kufian under the name Marginia, probably in association with the Margi Margiana. The archaeological culture of Kufian district and Harirut Valley is oldest component in native culture of the Oxus civilization. Khurasanis compare the land with the Ostalshe and the Ku area with the Pearl. Principal decorative ideas governing the pre and early Islamic stucco decor in Sayat, Holbuk, Dandankan, and Misrian buildings testify the truth of Eastern proverb. So the general statement I can read, uh, we have learned now a lot about transitional period in the art and architecture of northern Khurasan and may to summarize some key points. Strong statements are the following. The research provides a short geographical and historical overview. The study identifies plan and structure of four Khurasani buildings and major concepts governing their stucco decoration. It highlights the key role of prayer niche in this building in relation to content and arrangement of or ornamental and epigraphic motifs, defining chronology and phases of stucco implication. Graphical connections of stucco fragment according to patterns in relation to uh, to a chronological localization in four buildings shows possible arrangement of ornaments and inscriptions in their interior. Generally, it shows the nature of uh, pre-Islamic and early Islamic stucco decor ins and inscriptions in the area pursuing these three terms. The change of artistic modes in northern Khurasan and the formation of Islamic values on its soil development of cultural and uh, coexistence or homogeneity of the local art and as a result the rise of Islamic art. Uh, the tracing and preliminary comparative analysis of stucco inscriptions allows to identify origin of Kufi script, its local peculiarities and forms, and finally to draw a map of distribution zone. So. I'm sorry. I don't know how. Is it? Perfect. Perfect. 60 minutes. Thank you for sharing this uh, research with us and your wonderful drawings as well. Thank you for you. <laughs> 
probably any questions. Yeah. Yes, Herzfeld, uh, uh, Herzfeld uh, distinguishes three uh, uh, styles, ABC, yeah. and uh, what uh, uh, connects to Khorasan is a B, stage B. Yeah. Second, um, it um, it has been mentioned that uh, uh, probably this style has been uh, de uh, developed or Im implied in Samara by natives from Khorasan who were uh, in the um, uh, ninth, uh, tenth century, um, not brought but uh, um, worked in, in this area um, along with other schools. So I showed you only prelim preliminary um, work um, or part of research because I had no time to, um, to, to deepen myself in, in, the, um, in the concepts uh, of research. And um, the drawings take too much time. Uh, so I mean, there is connections, but they are, um, how to say it, um, normally uh, today's scholarship relate to Samara as a classical uh, work uh, to, uh, to draw connections and to, um, to make a chronological sequence for other buildings. Um, what I did, yeah, Khorasan, shows more f uh, earlier types of uh, inscriptions and ornaments. And also it shows the other mentality, I would say, um, because the West operates more with the vine leaves, grapes, and East with the lotus and water and uh, water creatures. This is two different, um, um, f I don't know, two different grounds or different world, uh, world per perceptions, yeah? And what I noted also, um, there is a difference in, um, in uh, understanding of the world or understanding how the world is created. Uh, in, the west, in the West, um, people uh, think more about tree, life of tree. It has roots, it has trunk, it has foliage, and so on. In the East, you have always uh, a, a plant which grew out of waters. And this is evergreen plant. It is not tree, it is lotus. Lotus on higher uh, stem. So, and it is, of course, surrounded with water creatures. Two different types. And, um, uh, what, uh, and these uh, parts of this uh, be, uh, seeing, world seeing, comes in second uh, um, style of Samara. And it's uh, not only influence, but um, uh, participation of the Khorasan uh, craftsmen in the uh, formation of the art, I think. Sorry. I don't know. Sorry, just in relation to it, uh, yeah. because I may have missed the highlight, but one of the, like in the conclusion part, one of the images that you were showing, actually for the second time, was from an interior where it is mentioned like a forest, right? Yes, like it was a, uh, yes, it was, um, uh, it was a fifth, sixth century, Yeah, this is Khorasan, but um, but it comes from earlier period. This one, you mean? Uh, you showed more like a reconstruction, three-dimensional, with showing like uh, it 
Is this one? Yeah, like in yeah. the yeah. Yeah. Much later. Yeah. Much later. Oh, I don't know. What do you mean? It was when you were completing that one. Nine? I don't know uh, uh, what uh, what kind of. But you did mention uh, forest. That's why I was. Looking yes, at forest. It was actually, on one facade, one like interior facade. Um. Facade, yes, I mean uh, about these pilasters, uh, which projected from the wall uh, a little bit, and. Uh, if you have an uh, inner courtyard surrounded with columns, real columns, ah, so you mean probably? It's yes, it's Sayyad. It's Sayyad, but um, it's a uh, last. Um, no, I don't know which one. Why didn't you just go to the last two yeah. or three pages? I don't remember w which number is it. It's one of the last three ones. Good. No, mm -hmm. like later. later. Later? Yeah, like in your conclusion, just before you yes. ended here. Can't you go to the end of the presentation? Good. Presentation by Anna. Can you go to slide 65? 65? No, 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 80. This? So you go forward, go to 81. 81. And then 82. Yeah, yeah, I think. Yeah, I think. No, there is no, uh, I don't know. This? Uh, you speak about Sayyad, about Sayyad, because Sayyad, um, uh, Sayyad, um, I, I, I need another, oh so yeah, um, I know. You know, it was like an abstracted, like, Can you show all the slides table. in, with the little pictures? The slides? Yeah, in this, in the slides, I don't know, I have no idea. I don't know, uh, because, be because my program is Why very, uh, is, um, is a sort of program which I don't know. It's a sub-program. Sub go to 80 and then work back. It's a Corel version. No. Go to number 80. Uh, probably 70. And then, were you talking to the columns that have the bulb is space and then the shaft narrows, swells out again? No, actually, that was interesting too. But no. what I was talking about was, yeah. I think, stuff yeah, yeah, okay. Go forward now. This one? Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, this um, courtyard was surrounded with real column, oh. and the back wall was surrounded with the uh, projecting um, pilasters. Yeah. And um, you had a, a so sense of forest. Um, I, I, I name it as a forest, probably. It's not. Um, but it's, uh, had, uh, it has another um, uh, concept that uh, what we have by many hands. Mm -hmm. It's more Buddhist. And these two chahartas, which led to the uh, shrines, um, depict dualism. Two uh, images, or image and sculpture, were venerated. In the house, the image and sculpture of the Buddha. Oh, okay. Were found. Yes, I mean uh, uh, wall painting mm -hmm. and a sculpture standing free mm. in the room. And uh, in second, uh, oh, saying also that this design in uh, Hatzfeld's publications of Samara are independent. Uh, they call it 
exactly the same pattern. So you are saying these are all earlier than. Yes, is this these are archaeological. Uh, 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 archaeologically uh, excavated buildings, and uh, every um, so I I needed to to verify uh, archaeological data uh, in which periods uh, comes uh, uh, the core and uh, in which uh, relation it stands to others. So, so implications are important. If Questions about it, but um, of course, Hertzfeld uh, actually argued against the argument that the influence was coming from Khorasan. He argued it's more of a Mediterranean, um, uh, that many of the mm, mm -hmm. classical motifs that were found in Samaria were abstractions of, uh, let's say, um, motifs that were found in the Mediterranean, whereas Strigovsky was the one who was arguing more for a, a Turkic uh, origin, which, so it, it seems um, that immediately the Turkic origin was uh, abandoned and the Mediterranean origin really became the norm by which now most people go. Uh, so it, this, um, so it really hinges, I think, on the chronology, uh, whether it's absolutely certain that this is the seventh, eighth century, and that's my question. How does one become certain of the dating? Not being an archaeologist myself. Uh um, so archaeologists use uh, uh, stratigraphy of layers, in which layers find uh, like coins, uh, um, uh, objects, and they will be dated. They have their own um, dating system. And correlation of different dating systems gives That's the I one. Know, uh, uh, that I mean, that <laughs> archaeologists can uh, um, be wrong by uh, a yes. In this case, yeah. in this case, uh, there is a um, uh, dating uh, with uh, coins with the uh, rebuilding of uh, rooms and uh, um, building of uh, um, uh, door doorways, yeah? Mm -hmm. And also uh, appearance of uh, such um, intermediate uh, um, walls. Change okay, so of siling. Mm -hmm. Can they do some luminescence testing on the bricks? What? Can they do some luminescence testing on the bricks? No. Um, um, what I show you uh, is made uh, during, uh, I mean excavated during the Soviet time, and um, the excavation, uh, excavations are made in, in very uh, simple mode, mm -hmm. I mean without uh, uh, um, any implication of uh, uh, modern technologies. Mm -hmm. And um, um, dating is uh, based on analogies, mm. mostly. The site uh, um, Sayatli is on the, uh, on the border with Afghanistan. It is not accessible for normal people. And uh, was uh, found by chance, mm. by excavating, uh, of, uh, by making a re irrigation canals. And uh, it was uh, excavated in higher tempo. So what I have is uh, only published materials. I was not there. Um, only some, uh, sorry, only some uh, uh, stucco uh, uh, um, frag fragments, which I uh, have um, possibility to see in, in our deposits, I photographed and compared. And many of these, uh, but many of these uh, panels have been found on the walls because uh, they were um, leveled by machines, by heaven machines, and by chance found. So.
just a real thing that is fun to make that dish. And I wish you would make it in some other than Cornell's select some luxury art things in the dish. Uh, what do you mean? Uh, objects? Uh, yes, objects bronze. Bronze, uh, bronze, um, geschirr, I don't know how to say it. Um, so, objects of, uh, for kitchen. Huh? Were they decorated with a flat style? No, 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 no. Um, they give, uh, but they give a uh, pre-Islamic time. Bronze, bronze um, kitchen. Uh, uh, kitchen of Vea was in, uh, in, in pre-Islamic ceramic um, and uh, um, coins, but coins are found uh, mostly in superficial layers so from 11th century. Yes. Soviet-era scholarship, so these kinds of questions about, you know, cultural continuities, fusions, hybridities, uh, the etymologies that trace uh, Sanskrit terms through Old Persian and Arabic. Um, I mean, is, is that part of your project to think more critically about the consequences of Soviet historiography for the interpretation of the archaeological? Um, it's a big question because you need uh, to rewrite the history <laughs> and uh, such investigation uh, it takes too much time uh, to verify firstly what has been done uh, and what we have. I made uh, a little bit for a uh, uh, Hulbuk uh, building um, so uh, I needed to start from from the zero, yeah, uh, to to uh, to verify materials. What is uh, reconstructed, and uh, um, is it rightly reconstructed? Where where uh, where it comes and so on, and uh, my materials gives. Um, in respect to higher level and in quarters, the other um, distribution of fragments, stack of fragments. What I showed you is uh, based on the investigation. Yeah? And it was, um, I don't know um, what was the, uh, as, uh, uh, why uh, people, uh, um, falsificate the history or uh, give other interpretation or place uh, fragments which found in one layer to another. It's not my uh, problem, yeah? But what I made shows, so. And uh, to, to do such research for other uh, uh, buildings, uh, you need really to, to have access to all data. And it's not easy. Thank you. I appreciate that. And just to follow up, the, 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 the Kuthi and Kiri. Kiri. Are you saying that Ibn al Nadim is talking about sites in Central Asia and not in Iraq? Is, is, is that? Yes, there is, there is sites which appeared nearby Kufa, Al Hiri, name, name two. But we know that in 9th, 10th century, Kufa grew. Uh, up with uh, uh, under influence of uh, uh, Abbasids, and it was likely civilized. <laughs> so by uh, oh, 
I don't know, ir Iranian-sized. Um, they have uh, grounded uh, schools for grammar uh, in, in Al Kufa. Mm -hmm. And many uh, people who came from the East worked on formation of the script. So, I mean, uh, probab probable is that Kufi or the Kofi, the Pushtekov, comes from mountains uh, or from area where um, uh, the, um, the educational and scientific uh, um, centers uh, were more uh, developed in that time. Barma kids are from Balkh, we know, the ministers of first caliphs. Um, you mean do you mean a particular form of Kufi script? Because I mean you have Kufi script appearing on the dome of the rock before the Abbasi. What? You have Kufi script before the Abbasis in the yes. dome of the rock. In the dome of the rock. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know what kind of uh, uh, kofik comes uh, in dome of the rock. Yeah, it is it is it west kofi, uh, which kind of uh, decor it has. So you are talking about a particular form of. Kufi. Yes, I to I'm talking only about kofi forms which appear in in Khurasan or in the limited area. And I go, uh, I don't uh, compare it with the other. Uh, it's, um, um, I, I'm trying to, to make me sure what I have, firstly. And then to, to, to compare. Giving stories to the, to the yeah. Fol that's, 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 usually, that's usually seen in the Middle East in, in India. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know uh, what what is about uh, Western Kufi, what in Misrian comes. It's very intricate and very fine. Um, the letters are, I had such perceptions that they are covered on a layer which was covered. So one uh, one uh, script is uh, uh, overlaid by other. So, and um, um, it's quite different type of writing. Uh, and I don't know, uh, is it uh, possible um, to, to compare uh, the, the different style? Each master or each craftsman has its own individual uh, style of carving. And um, uh, important uh, are, in that case, uh, forms of leaves. What kind of leaves he uses and what kind of dec uh, decor appears. We, we saw uh, in the West, um, uh, these are vine leaves and trefoils more. So, Kipari suppresses it. also these um, lotuses, which appear more in Celtic forms mm -hmm. later on, too, which uh, seems uh, a bit different from the forms that. Uh, and I mean, kind of it seems to have an afterlife in the Celtic monuments coming all the mm -hmm. way to Anatolia. Because these lotuses, which are tulip like, also mm -hmm. appear. Uh, lotuses are, um, have very different yeah. forms. Yeah. They are two-parted, three-parted. And uh, f uh, for example, here in, in uh, I, perc I percept this form, for example, as half lotus. Mm -hmm. 
this dividing of uh, um, stem above and uh, in in uh, in the, in the west we have um, another form they are um, they will be seen above as suspended from the uh, from the uh, uh, from the line um, or covered uh, by grooves, yeah? and the letters in Hulbuk and Sayot stands freely on the background. They uh, elevated from the background, not inside of materia. That is difference in technique and it gives difference in, uh, in carving. I mean, uh, the West uh, uh, Misrian types is uh, more characteristic for people who are trained in stone carving. Uh, stone is hard material and to carve it, you need much more energy. And you carve it with the grooves, little grooves. You are only outline in size, uh, uh, making incisors. And here you are work with layers and uh, the uh, unnecessary partic particles will be uh, 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 taken away. I, I show here a uh, mm, uh, uh, wall in section. If you applying uh, an ornament on, uh, on the uh, um, outside or on the upper layer, and uh, cover it, y you, uh, you take it away, and uh, the, uh, the background remains plain. So, I mean, um, th uh, there is a um, difference between carving and between appearance uh, or form of the f uh, letters. Yeah, Yeah, please. Uh, it's more from urban historian uh, perspective, but I want to uh, ask about this. The locusts and grapes are really interesting in the differentiation in which both uh, places. We know that grapes are important in the other side and the everyday lives of people and very important. But uh, in the Locus on the other side is more perhaps tea-based lifestyle. I don't know. We know like quite a few. Now saying this, I don't want to go to a place uh, that can be more uh, geodeterministic about it, geographical determinacy and so on. I don't want to do such a sad thing, but about this place from the ninth century and the twenty, uh, we have good uh, works made on the cotton production and uh, the, the, we know that it's a good time for cotton and uh, there ah, also we uh, bound wool, bound wool. Bound also wool. cotton. Mm -hmm. Cotton, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so we know that the urbanization has something to do with in this period in Kolotov with this good weather conditions and so on. I don't know if you uh, have uh, something in the material uh, to do or the types of buildings to do with this uh, kind of relationship? To cotton production? No, I mean with weather, the difference in weather. Is there a difference in weather in both the uh, locusts and grape uh, kind of things in or uh, in the types of climate? climate mm -hmm. the Effect of climate, ah. can you read effect of climate and how uh, then? <laughs> you mean, uh, ah, I understand, influence of uh, climate on the appearance of building types and decor. Yeah? yeah. Um, I don't know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's very difficult. It's. Uh, uh, I tried uh, in my book to, to find um, correlation between uh, climate change in uh, Central Asia mm -hmm. and the types of walls 
implemented throughout 5,000 years. <laughs> and uh, there is some, uh, we can generally say, for example, 2,000 years long in Khorezm was very hot, and they, they had to, do, to use uh, uh, um, building materials from clay. Yeah, they had no, uh, or it was very uh, expensive to use wood. Yeah, in other uh, uh, period, uh, it was more humid, and they used uh, uh, more Balkan siling or beam siling. Yeah, um, but in relation to decor, it's uh, difficult to say. Um, I would, I would um, make um, connections between uh, four common, how to say it, between extraction place of materials uh, like alabaster, yeah, clay, good clay, for carving. Yeah? Um, they appear not uh, everywhere in Central Asia. But in uh, special places, for example, in, in foothill zones, yeah, Bactria is a very uh, uh, um, archaeologically and historically uh, famous for its uh, limestones, uh, different limestones and uh, marbles and uh, simple stones, white stones, and also shifa. So we, uh, uh, we see an um, implication of stone in the art uh, also only by Buddhists. And uh, the use of stone only as base of columns. But generally, um, the tradition is more uh, brick uh, tradition or the brick uh, architecture in brick because of climate, because of very continental, hot continental um, difference between, uh, uh, between day and night, and between winter and uh, summer time. It's, uh, it's not uh, um, because of expensity or econ economy, but because of climate. We, we have, uh, it's much better to, to live in the clay house Oh, in brick house, then in uh, stone house. So, if I may, I just ask my priest that if it's most of the traditions that were there that were um, there before Islam, I mean, uh, Buddhism is all about the lotus, and the vine is, is uh, has, has been shown as this really. The quintessential um, sort of a core in injury, and it comes all the way from Solomon's Temple um, to, to the end of the end, and it's very early Islam, the one who ends with Islam. It's changed radically from what I can say. I think that's more to do with yes, uh, why, the why global why? imagery, the imagined world, or the world of the afterlife, of the way fertility is, is imagined. So I think you made a very good point there that the, about mm -hmm. the Um, if I may, as a South uh, Asian, especially, I was really intrigued by some of the motifs that you showed, that they may be not the more, the most widespread, and I, I'd never seen them before in, in this region, the swirling motifs with lots of these, I don't know if those are the ones that you call algae, the less structured ones. And they really, really closely resemble the very, um, the, the um, smuggle cartoon other motifs were already familiar with the Hurids and what the mm -hmm. is. And I think this connection with Khorasan is very interesting in relation to these motifs and which probably if we find more, if there's more excavation, if there's more, unfortunately, a lot of the relevant areas are not in, um, are not the most peaceful. I'm thinking more of I mean, present day Afghanistan if we want, but we'll probably, there will probably be surprises 
common shared language. I mean, what I mean is the words probably, and without my list before them, uh, already had these motifs. They already found them familiar. It was a, a, these motifs that circulated much earlier, but they had continued to be, continued in use after the Islamic conquest. And that is extremely fascinating for me, also because I work on a different period, so I, I don't think we'll ever make a contribution in, in this, um, of this period of, of but I see these same connections in my period, the 16th century, 15th, 16th century, with, with Central Asia. And I think the reason we've not seen this before so much is to a large extent because scholarship in Russian has not been available to yeah. those that wrote the books that everybody mm -hmm. read. Mm -hmm. And so that's why it works so much. And so I think you see more of this published in a lot of the languages that are more um, uh, many uh, ornaments which I show you from uh, 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 with the stems uh, or underwater uh, uh, plants, they are coming uh, um, in ornamentic of Turkmens, uh, Soviet Turkmens, or I, I don't know Khorasan Turkmens. They are using uh, uh, they use uh, these uh, motifs in carpets. Um, and uh, in all things which uh, uh, will be produced by hand. Uh, these, uh, these, I mean, these motifs are immortal. Uh, they will be, they will be um, interpreted otherwise. But uh, they are remain, and people who um, use them, they don't know the meaning. They, they know them as something other. Um, for example, murhak, they say, uh, for, for, uh, for serpent, they, uh, they say murhak, or some sun is something other, or they see other things. Horses, uh, birds, uh, Every, every, everyone can imagine what he see, sees, but um, um, I mean, we need um, to have a complex uh, connection to all other things in the building. And the spread of Manichaeismus was uh, after the third century in Central Asia. So there is a direct connection between the um, Manichaeization of society and g uh, grow of such art. I'm sorry about uh, that. Um, so little connection to real Islamic art. But it's uh, origins. Yeah. So. Thank you. Thank you.